Right, good afternoon, everyone. You're very welcome. Here's the Institute. Uh, we're very lucky today to be to hear about your presentation from Peter Davies, CEO and founder of Verve and Velux Token. We were chatting down below at, at, over lunch as to where we are, where, where we're at, is that the, the equivalent to the launch of the Acon, com, Acon computer, and it's about to take off in terms of an Apple, an Apple Mac, because about to arrive um, a word processor that will de deal with this new technology, blockchain technology. So uh, we very much look forward to hearing Peter's presentation and then having a question and answer session afterwards. Before that, uh, I'm able just to introduce uh, Peter. I might ask Jerry O'Sullivan, Deputy Chief Executive of the ESB, to say a few words on their interest in this whole area and issue. Good afternoon, everybody. And um, first of all, you're very welcome here on behalf of ESB and um, to the fourth series of a fourth lecture in the series with uh, uh, IIEA on energy. Um, the, the topic for this year is um, energy lifestyles and I suppose that ties extremely well with ESP's strategy to create uh, an all purpose, which is to create a brighter future for the communities we serve and to lead the transition to a lower carbon future. So I know our last lecture here had Christian Ruby, who was talking about the massive changes that are needed in the energy system across Europe to radically transform such that we can um, achieve Paris targets and decarbonize the whole electricity system by 2050. And in a world like that, where 60% of end use will come from clean electricity rather than the 20% that currently is the situation. So I suppose for us, in our business, that means fully decarbonizing the electricity system and electrification of heat and transport are the big planks of the strategy. And um, of course, the piece in all of that is a huge change in everyone's attitudes and behaviors, including our own. And I suppose that's what ESP has recognized, that we need to really work with customers to together work that future out. And I suppose all utilities used to think they knew best and they would try and tell you what that was. We're not going to be like that. We want to work with customers to carve the future. So today's speaker then, Peter, I suppose, embodies that for us. And around two years ago, we in ESB joined eight other international world global utilities, and we created a program called Free Electrons. And um, a, last year, over 500 startup companies in the green space participated in that program and I was very pleased to be in Berlin recently where the top 15 companies were uh, in action working with those top eight utilities and Verve was one of those companies and it was great to meet Peter there and we have signed a proof of concept with Verve um, and we would intend to uh, working with our regulator to um, talk about peer-to-peer uh, -peer trading of energy in our new Dingle pilot, which hopefully many of you know about, which is <coughs> whereby we are going to put in place the energy system of the future, which will enable this new transition. And I personally believe that peer-to-peer -peer trading of energy is, is going to be part and parcel <coughs> of the new world. And what we want to do is to gain experience of that, and hence our, we're really, really pleased to be working with Peter and his company. And of course, really delighted to welcome here to Dublin. And maybe you'll get an opportunity to talk about free electrons in, in some of your <coughs> questions here, because it's an absolutely fantastic program for startup companies to work with big utilities to create the future. And we certainly want to reach out and collaborate with lots of others. We do not know all the answers. Just by collaboration, we get better. So that's really pleased to be here. If you want to give your presentation and then we'll throw it open to questions and answers afterwards. Yeah, sure. Um, brilliant, yeah. Well, thank you for coming along. Uh, my name is Peter Davies. I'm the founder of a company called Verve. Uh, my background is electronic electrical engineering. I've uh, been in the energy sector since probably about 2007. Uh, originally started in the commercial sector showing big companies how they could save 10% of their energy bill. They moved into the grid level, so I was working with substations in the UK where we were showing um, how uh, appliances when they were turned on were causing things like voltage flicker on the line and power quality issues. 
and then eventually realised that the whole technology that we've been working with was very much down the domestic consumer route, and that's where the company's focus has been over the last three years. So as a company, uh, our whole focus is on this kind of democratisation uh, and future of the energy sector. And basically what we've done is start building this energy marketplace of the future, all based around data. And one of the company's big missions is basically to reduce everyone's electricity bills down to zero. And it sounds like a big, crazy scenario, but the telecom industry is already headed there in terms of line rental and data and text messages. And we're on a mission to do the same thing uh, for the energy sector and our consumers. I'm going to spend the next kind of 20 minutes talking you through how we're going about that journey. Um, it all started with uh, a Verve Hub. So uh, data is the key scenario. And first of all, you need to be able to get that data. So you've had a, a smart meter rollout across the UK and the rest of Europe. But we soon realised that it wasn't giving us the granular level of the data that we needed. So we built a little hub which sits on top of your electricity meter or smart meter um, and basically samples your mains power line a million times a second. So that's five million times faster than the average smart meter. Um, and you can see that it's very simple to clip on. So clips literally around the cable going into your electricity meter. Um, communicates directly with a smart meter if you've got it by a Zigbee chip. Um, and basically starts sampling your mains power line. And from that data it can tell you what appliances are on at any time. How much they're costing you. And from the data you can even tell if those appliances are starting to break down over time. So condition monitoring, etc. which I'll come to in a bit more detail. We then send all that data, so what appliances are on, etc., to an iPhone app or Android app or tablet. So you then have a user interaction in real time, which allows them to kind of be educated by the system. Um, and you can see from the kind of world map there, the electricity system, like the Brits put in place a lot of the infrastructure around the world and the Americans did the other half. So our product automatically works across most of the world. And the system that we've got turning up next year will work across uh, the US. Um, and you can see in the kind of top right, it's just a little kind of smart home product which will sit on top of your electricity meter. It's so about that big, very non-intrusive, and we'll start analysing all this data for you. Um, and so what is that data we're looking for? Well, um, every appliance has its own unique power signature. So if you imagine your washing machine, it's got a circuit board on it. Each of those components, resistors, and capacitors creates a unique power signature. And it would be the equivalent of being in a room of, say, 12 people having dinner, and you put an Amazon Echo in the middle of the table. And we know that the machine learning in that Amazon Echo is clever enough to work out who's talking at any point, what they're saying um, in any language these days. Um, but also, if somebody started to shout or raise their voice or start to whisper, it's the same thing. Your appliances are creating this unique power signature on your mains power line, where if that signal starts to change over time, you can see that change using you know, signal processing machine learning algorithms, and therefore you can start to tell things about the appliance. So you can see from this, when you turn on the mixer, the mixer's got a unique signature, so machine learning's run over this in real time, they pop up that your mixer is being used on your app. It can then know how much power your mixer's using, so it provides that information, and it can tell you if that motor is starting to break on your mixer. Um, it then sends all this information, like I said, live apps, so it starts to kind of become uh, a useful feature in your home, so part of the kind of smart home ecosystem. So it will tell you if you've left on your iron or your oven or your hair straighteners. Um, it will send you notifications, say, hey, your washing machine's finished. Um, can even start doing things like uh, allowing users to get involved in demand side response, which is at the peak time between 6 and 7 p.m. Um, if you turned off some of your appliances, the grid will actually benefit from that, so it can incentivize you to do that. Um, and then it can also send notifications to tell you if your washing machine is starting to break down. Like 40% of all um, home care call-outs are because of a filter blockage on the actual um, washing machine. So it can start to analyse the signature and be, okay, well, the drain cycle is taking longer or there's a change in the harmonics in the power line, therefore your filters start to block. So it can actually send a user a notification about six weeks before the washing machine's broken down that your washing machine needs the filter blocking. So all of a sudden, all those consumers which are paying for a monthly subscription so that an engineer will come out and fix it as soon as it breaks, get a better service because actually they'll now know that the washing machine is about to break down and they're actually um, beat the problem happening in the first place so then they'll be without these appliances. Um, and so this data kind of opens up a lot of different propositions and a lot of them are based around the consumer, like the insights and the kind of better quality of service that they would get from the data, but also from the utility providers themselves. 
So a lot of these big retailers are realizing that actually, you know, their markets are being pulled away. You've got Bulb in the UK that have just pulled in 800,000 customers off the you know, big utility companies. And they're realizing that they need to move towards this service model. And the only way they can move towards a service model in a kind of powerful manner is to get access to the data. And that's the data at the consumer level about their behavioral usages um, and kind of how they're, how they're using their smart homes. Um, but a key thing I wanted to focus on this particular presentation is the kind of big three um, D letter words that people are talking about in the industry. First is digitization, which we've had by smart meters, we've had by um, products like ours uh, communicating with smart meters. Uh, you've got decentralization, which I'll talk about um, in scale over the next 10 minutes, and uh, decarbonization. Um, and the first one, the decarbonization is obviously that the future homes, everyone wants to have solar panels on their roof uh, and a battery in the home. And that allows you to kind of have this in-home energy management system. And we want to encourage people to be going out and putting solar panels on their roof um, to therefore generate energy. Um, you've just done something pretty awesome in Ireland. In fact, you've now created this incentive model uh, by offering a grant for people to go and get solar on their roof. So it's now building the business models on top of that to really incentivize that. Um, and the way I want to talk about that is, is through this peer-to-peer -peer energy trading route. Um, and one of the key things that allows that is um, through using a technology called blockchain. Um, and I think from my discussions I had over lunch, actually there's quite an advanced knowledge on it, which is amazing. Um, but you just want to think of blockchain as basically an Excel spreadsheet. And instead of one person owning that Excel spreadsheet, it's a bit like a Google Doc that lots of people are kind of in control and can see who's made the changes and, and verify it. Um, and that's all it is. It's basically just a spreadsheet, but a spreadsheet that's controlled by the masses instead of just one person. Um, and the reason we got involved in this kind of blockchain scenario is, okay, so our Verve monitor is monitoring your mains power line in your home. And from that, it knows when you're turning on these appliances and how they're being used. So when you turn on your washing machine, it knows that in an hour's time, the heating element of that washing machine is going to turn on. So it knows that in an hour's time, you're going to need a kilowatt hour in your home. It's also monitoring your solar. So you've got your solar panels on the roof, and that's dependent on the weather. So it's able to pull in things like satellite imagery data, which can check the opacity of the cloud, how thick it is, to predict your weather usage in advance. So now you know how much solar you're going to generate over the next kind of hour, 24 hours, etc. And if you know when your washing machine is being turned on, you know how much power you're gonna use in advance. And so the two of that is quite a powerful combo. And if you add to that the third bit of the jigsaw, which is if you have local storage, then all of a sudden you now have the solar being generated on your roof, which can also store to a local battery. So without even meaning to do this, we basically realized we built the world's best tool for being an in-home energy management system. Because we know how your usage is going on in your home, Therefore, we can predict your behavior during the course of the next two minutes, 10 minutes, half an hour, 24 hours. We arm that with all your future solar information on your roof. And if you add in a battery, then you've got this amazing in-home energy management system. And the best thing about it is it's completely automated. So you as a user, the dream of this is you don't do anything different. You keep going on about your usual routines. And in the background, you've got a smart bit of tech, which is managing all this energy consumption for you. Um, and we've basically got a quad core process for it. So uh, we've got one core, which is basically doing all the data acquisition. You know, we're sampling a million times a second. That's a lot of data. We've got two cores doing the machine learning side of it. And then we've got this four core, which is doing peer-to-peer -peer energy trading. And this basically stems from um, us realizing we had this energy management system and going, well, if people started buying their energy directly from their next door neighbor who's got solar panels, rather than potentially from the grid, how much money would they actually save? So we did a project with 100 homes in the UK, uh, hooked them all up with these Verve units. They all have batteries and solar, and basically just analyzed the data. And we showed that each of those houses would save over 20% off their electricity bill if they were able to buy and sell their energy directly with their neighbor at peak times during the, um, during the day. Um, and those that had solar panels on their roof would generate another 20% of revenue on top. So all of a sudden you had this huge incentive that those with solar panels could make more money than what they were uh, able to use before. And actually, the reason the Verve Hub was even more interesting was we would have access to that trading information far faster than any smart meter that was currently out there in the market. Um, which means, if you think about it like the financial markets, he who has access to the data the quickest gets the best price when currency trading, etc. So it's all about the speed of the data and the, the quality of the information you get, which allows you to make these trading decisions. 
again automatically. And in the UK, there's something very interesting. We, we have a, a standard bill for myself, say, is about 15p per kilowatt hour. But if you've got solar panels on your roof, we have a feed-in tariff. And that feed-in tariff used to be about 25p, then went down to about 18p, and then it's gone down to about 7p. And you probably heard, like, they've just scrapped it. And the problem with them just scrapping it, it means that one of the major kickers for them having a return on their investment on the solar has just been completely pulled from under the rug. Um, so actually, it's like, well, how can we incentivize people to still put solar on their roof? We still want this decarbonized future. And actually, peer-to-peer -peer energy trading is a hugely powerful way of generating this new revenue because, therefore, the consumer can start selling this solar panel that they've got to their neighbor that basically isn't able to, you know, they couldn't afford to go get solar panels, etc. but they can buy the energy cheaper. And it's using less of the grid because it's selling it to the next-door neighbor. And it can be monitored because you know the postcode of the energy that's bought it and the energy that's not. And the brilliantly powerful thing about the blockchain and all this is that it's a ledger which is being completely maintained by the public. So when I sell my one kilowatt hour to my next door neighbor, there's a transaction history there which can be tracked. It's completely public. It's completely secure because we're all looking after it. Um, and it's a very powerful tool that's very democratized. So you don't need one central body which is looking after the big spreadsheet and sending the bills to everyone. You're all looking after the spreadsheet. And therefore, it allows this kind of um, transparency across the whole system, but in a very secure manner. The reason we started using blockchain was not because it was a super cool buzz thing. In 2015, not a lot of people had even heard of it. The reason we started using it was because I really didn't want to build up a big um, database survey team that were going to call me up at two in the morning to say, hey, the server's down, you know, your entire energy system is on the floor. Um, and luckily we had some guys, you know, we were into the whole Bitcoin stuff at the time, so we were like, well, actually, this blockchain technology is really awesome as a security to know that it's always going to stay up. And that, for me, is the biggest, most powerful thing about blockchain and this, is the security of supply. Like, you know, if AWS goes down, your blockchain ledger won't go down. It's on every single computer going through, so there's always going to be a traceable ledger, which is powerful. So we were looking for a, a real opportunity, a real world example where we can make a big difference. We've proven um, through simulation, through the data of these 100 homes that we're gonna make these guys a 20% saving. So we wrote a government grant uh, and picked up some funding from Innovate in the UK, managed to get the regulator on board, which is a key powerful thing in all this, You've gotta have the regulator buy-in. But you know, hopefully you've already picked up, it's a very consumer focused product. So it's in the regulator's interest to make sure the consumer benefits, so they're interested. So they set up a sandbox for us in London. Um, and we basically found a housing estate uh, in Hackney where they basically had um, some communal buildings. And each of those communal buildings had already put solar panels onto its roofs. But each of those homes, so you've got 40 flats in each block, they're actually um, all on prepay meters because they're considered a credit risk. So as I'm paying 15p per kilowatt hour, these guys are paying up to 18p per kilowatt hour because they're potentially a, you know, a credit risk. So if you think about what's happening, they're getting 5p per kilowatt hour from the solar panels which are on the roof, and each of those tenants is paying 18p per kilowatt hour. So you've got this big arbitrage of you know, this 13 pence worth of data when these guys are actually physically using the electrons which they're generating on their roof. So some, something's not right there. We feel okay. So what we did was we put a verve in every single home, and we've put some batteries into the actual building itself, teamed up with some really awesome guys called Repowering that basically did all the community management, and we've basically been live energy trading on this housing estate in Hackney, showing that we can save these tenants quite a large chunk off their energy bill. And we've been working with the regulator to allow them to see the huge benefit. And one of the really powerful things is we're working with uh, British Gas to even be able to potentially change the bill. So this is where the regulator becomes quite in because that electricity bill is so well defined in all kind of state. But what we're looking to do is have your electricity bill where it says British Gas, 62 pounds, minus Verve, which is the energy trading, 12 pounds. Therefore, the bill to the consumer is 50 pounds. And therefore, you know, to actually have this being real-time calculated and be able to be put offset against their bill is a hugely powerful scenario. And again, completely automated without these guys getting involved or having to change their behavior or anything else. Um, so it's been very successful. We we're the first people in the UK to do a live energy trade on the blockchain. We've been looking at legally making this kind of a, a regulatory uh, modification, and you've got interesting things on the balancing the settlement grid that we're working with. Um, people are like, well, that's really cool. We're going to save these guys some money on their energy bill, but we're trying to get everyone's electricity bills down to zero. So it's like, well, how else can we monetize it? 
Um, so we spent a long time kind of working with these guys um, as part of this regulatory scenario, educating them on the system, showing them how to use the app that we built to show them how they can also make some savings in kind of uh, their habits. Um, and we were like, well, there's a key thing here where we've got two and a half million people in the UK alone who are on this kind of fuel poor scenario where if we can actually change the way they're get, potentially getting billed, it's going to have a massive impact on their lives. Um, but the really interesting thing is this box was also doing all those other scenarios about your um, usage habits. It was telling you if your washing machine was starting to break down, it was telling you um, you've left your hair straighteners on. And that data is actually hugely valuable. I mean, talking over lunch, there's a, there's a really interesting um, uh, discussion we have. And if you think about your washing machine, your washing machine in your home, like we know from this electricity box every time you turn that washing machine. So we know that after every 20 washing machine cycles, you're probably going to need washing powder. So Amazon would love to know that you need washing powder because they can then sell you washing powder. That's a valuable use of the data. Unilever would love to know what type of washing powder you use and how you use that, and therefore that's another very useful bit of data. Um, the insurance company wants to know that if your washing machine's got a fault, whether it's likely to flood. And if it's likely to flood, then that's going to therefore increase your insurance contents bill. So they're really interested in your washing use data. You've got... Um, the likes of people that are selling you your washing machine. They want to know if you're buying the latest eco washing machine, if they can sell you the latest eco washing machine based on your energy savings you're going to make over a period of time. You've got um, the people selling you the actual products itself. But you then got people involved in the demand side response and people selling you batteries or solar. If they're armed with your data of your usage, they can offer you the best return on uh, buying a battery or getting involved in demand side response. The grid wants to know about your usage of that washing machine because if it's causing extra power spikes or harmonics on the line, they want to be able to solve it. The energy companies want to be able to know about it because they want to understand what tariff you're on. And actually, if you're somebody that always uses your washing machine during the middle of the day, they might be able to provide you with a better tariff to be able to put through. Um, but also, if they know the filters start to block on that washing machine, then the guy that's providing the warranty for that washing machine wants to know about your data as well and also the people that are providing the service for that washing machine. So the engineer that was coming around to fix it also wants to know about your data. So you've all of a sudden just got a list of about 10 different companies that are interested in your particular data. And even though it's not a huge amount of value of that data, they all add up. And the brilliant thing is you can see from this, it's, it's not just one company that want to buy that bit of data. Amazon want to be able to compete with Sainsbury's to sell you a washing machine, who want to be able to compete with Tesco, who want to be able to supply you the latest Samsung products. So Samsung are interested. Russell Hobbs want to know that all your other products are Russell Hobbs products, so they can keep you into it. So you, all of a sudden, these data is getting monetized over and over again. And if I give you an example, in the insurance companies alone, us being able to reduce your contents bill from the analysis we've been doing them, is looking to save you about £30 a year off your insurance. And if you think you've got over 4 million people in the UK that are paying you know, between 5 and £10 per month so that an engineer will come around and fix their appliance, then all of a sudden there's a lot of revenue that's able to be built on top of these and reduced again off your electricity bill. So when we were talking about you know, your British gas bill turns up and you have British gas £62 minus the £12 per peer-to-peer, what we're also going to have is minus another £20 from the data that they've sold during the course of that. And so it's actually creating this future where all this data is actually a monetary value. And if you see the guy in the middle, like GDPR is one of the best things that's ever happened in this sector. And blockchain allows you to follow where that data's gone. It's going to be encrypted from the word go. And you know at any particular point as to who's got your data. So if you don't want to sell it to Amazon, you don't have to. And if you've sold it to Amazon and three months down the line, you're like, I really don't like Amazon anymore, you can stop. It's a contract that you signed with Amazon on the blockchain. You cancel it and you can go and sell it to somebody else. And in fact, you can sell it over and over again. And it's all traceable, it's all transparent, and it's all encrypted in a format that you want. It's all of a sudden putting the user completely in control of their data. And we talked about um, you know, roll out. This, this doesn't need to be something that's mandated upon people. If they receive this product, they get the opportunity to say, well, do you want to save some more money off your energy bill? Do you want to actually uh, make some money from peer to peer? And you start to build the community stuff. Um, and the thing I think is really fascinating, one of the things we've talked a lot about Dingle, is actually how it encourages the community behavior. Because now you want your neighbor to go and get solar panels because the more people that have solar panels in your, in your neighborhood, the cheaper your electricity is going to be. And therefore, the more transactions which are happening really helps the grid as well. So the more energy that's going through it, at the moment you've got a feed-in tariff of, say, 5p in the UK, 
But no one's making any money on that. It's just going out, you know, government incentive, etc. Now, actually, you can take a cut of the transaction. So if um, ESB or an insurance company has rolled out this product, then now they can actually help transact the energy. And every time there's a peer-to-peer -peer transaction, the grid is going to get a percentage of that cut. So you need the infrastructure in place. Now the maintenance for the grid is paid for. Now it's in ESB or another company's incentive to roll it out because they can actually make money on the transactions which are being put through. Plus they can provide the best beta data services. Um, and that's why you know, we're very proud to talk about the fact that we've partnered with ESB to do this project in Dingle. Um, you've got a very innovative thinking energy company which is willing to kind of pioneer this. So we've signed a, a contract to actually um, you know, proof this concept in Dingle, just like we've done with um, the UK. Uh, and it's going to be really interesting to see how it's taken up, how the community responds to it, and where and how they want to be looked after on the data from. And the brilliant thing I like about working with the SB is it means we can slowly educate the people locally as to what it goes through. Like We're not going to all of a sudden let their data to be sold to anyone that's gone through. It'll be select partners with ESB as we go through this journey. The whole blockchain community, we talked about this a lot, a lot over lunch, is um, going to start rating those people that are buying your data. So if Amazon start being really bad users of your data and, and you know putting it to a use that you're not happy with, you're just going to rate them lower, just like you do with Uber, just like you do with Airbnb. So it'll actually only start selling your data to companies that you're happy about using your data. They're going to have to tell you why they're using their data. And therefore, it's going to be in your interest as a consumer to decide who you want to. You don't have to sell your data to anyone. But you'll know that actually you'll get a monetary response for it where you'll be able to make a few pounds off your electricity bill. Um, and again, I think I want to come back to it. It's a very international project. Um, we've already got a partnership happening with TEPCO in Japan um, where they have a very similar scenario to Ireland where you know, they're an island. They don't do lots of natural gases and um, fossil fuels in the actual island itself. They have to import it in. And therefore, if you can encourage this kind of generation of renewables, it's in the best interest for an island to actually uh, you know, look after its future security of its own supply, its generation of energy, and its maintenance of its whole grid infrastructure. So I think the learnings we're going to get from Japan are going to be very useful for the learnings that we're going to be able to have here in Ireland. And we've already teamed up um, you know, Ocean Protocol, who I mentioned before, these amazing guys in the data play and AI. Um, they've got a base in Singapore, so we're looking at um, Singapore stuff. And in the UK, so I'm very proud to have the, the regulators on board. But we're also testing this out in the US. I've got a load of units out in Austin, Texas. Um, and we've been talking with some guys in Portugal. And I think, again, I want to talk about um, the free electrons program. Like, we wouldn't have met ESB, we wouldn't have met TEPCO if we didn't have this kind of awesome international program where these energy companies are actually incentivized to really drive forward innovation. Uh, and work with these startups that have got these ideas, but they don't have the platform. Um, so I'm a big believer in that program. And so, you know, huge congrats for you guys, you know, starting up the whole scenario. And you just had to see the buzz in the room for the amount of um, traction that's been generated. Like the companies got bought in this program. It was crazy. Um, but yeah, uh, so yeah, just to summarize, it's kind of the mission that we're on, how your data is going to have a huge value in the future energy market, how the whole peer-to-peer -peer side is going to be a transparent, like democratized um, open platform, which is going to encourage the future of renewables. Thank you.